guys. We are recording. Don't worry, this is going to be unlisted. Okay, that's very good. I don't always promise that to adults because sometimes I accidentally put them up as public. Yeah. But because um, I just have it public for another thing I'm doing and then I forget to reset it and it's always universal like, whatever you do after that. So, uh, but for kids, I always make sure it's unlisted. Okay, I think we're recording. Okay, so that's good. Okay, so you were saying, uh, first of all, Deborah counts. Uh, it is March 12, 2020. And all right, so that's just so you know when you get the video, you know when it is. And right. It, I mean, it's stamped on there and everything, but still. Okay, so you were saying your, how did your home practice go? You had the fire engine. I did. And oh, you were awesome. doing your, oh, that, okay. With that gravel. My biggest thing was overcoming that gravelly point that I wanted to All right. to overcome. So, uh, and let me get one. Did it? Did it? You you did it without gravelly? I did. Okay. Oh, got it. You know, not at every single time, but I'll yes. have enough to make me a little excited to know that. Um, All right, I was doing something. Let me ask you a question. Have you had your thyroid checked, like? Lately. No, lately. Well, I was just reminded because uh, my mom had thyroid issues all her life. And I do take so, Levithorox and form my thyroid, but mom. it's been years since um, I've had it really checked. Well, um, and I was talking with, I have a hormone specialist that I work with. Yeah. Uh, I was in about five years ago. And we just had a kind of a refresher consult. I mean, about once a year. And he was reminding me about thyroid testing and well we were talking about testosterone testing but he uh, that reminded me he's like oh i should have my thyroid checked again because when you have your thyroid checked by like your average everyday pcp right. um they test within like legal ranges right so um but it doesn't test certain types of thyroid measurements okay. there's like i don't remember what they are i read like four books uh, uh, six years ago when one day I collapsed and a friend said, you know, like maybe your hormones are all messed up. And I was like, well, what, what, what do you mean? Mm -hmm. And, uh, this is going somewhere okay. back toward the gravelly voice, by the way. Um, and, uh, she was like, well, you're, you're about the age where menopause could be happening. I was like, first of all, I hate you. <laughs> Second of all, you're probably right. <laughs> so, so I was like, but I don't know really what it means because I had never, than any in-depth research about it. Okay. So I started reading. And uh, that's when I learned that, although I had I'd gone to the doctors saying, like, my energy is so low. Um, you know, that's what sent me. You know, mm -hmm. And there are all these symptoms that that a, what's now called functional medicine doctor, like the ones who are like, okay, let's let's help you function optimally so you die. That's, yes, that's I like that. I like the fun one. Um, so, and there is one. In, I've located one. A, a more popular term these days is integrative medicine. You've probably heard that because there's CHM Memorial Integrative Medicine. Mm -hmm. And that's like close. Functional is more like they're going to be looking, they're really going to be looking at all the details. The only problem is like hardly anything they do is covered with insurance. Oh. So that's always like the stuff that really works. <laughs> so we're covered by insurance. But Along the lines, um, uh, for both my mom and me, because my mom has complained to me for at least a dozen years. My voice, she doesn't remember this, but she, uh, <laughs> that uh, my voice always sounds hoarse. It always sounds so gravelly, and it always sounds this and that. And I've noticed my own voice's tendency, and, uh, and I was like, hmm. And as I was reading my research and stuff, I came across a few things, many things, I've talked about one of the thyroid indicators, like that there's a thyroid problem, is a gravelly or hoarse sounding voice. That's well, kind of like hoarse. When I talk, a, a lot of times it feels hoarse or sounds hoarse. So there's there's a couple of things that are like, okay, if you don't want to pay, you know, $200 to have a really in-depth thyroid test done by a functional medicine doctor, there's an, a, one thing that you can do to help with the talking graveliness and of course there's there's morning graveliness that everybody kind of has 
the solution to that is one of your voice a little bit. But a big thing that speakers, actors, people who are using uh, uh, telemarketers, people who are using their voice day in, day out, um, and I use this technique, you'll notice, when I, when I tell you about it, you'll start noticing it. And that is a little trick, okay? So let's say, um, your husband's name is Parker? Correct. Okay. So Parker's on the other side of the house, mm -hmm. and he goes, Hey, Deborah, and you go, uh huh, okay, without thinking about it. That pitch that your voice stopped on, huh, 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 there it is. That's where mine stopped, huh. Talk there, talk there. It, it brings you out of the place where your vocal folds are regularly beating against each other. We're going to talk about how your voice is produced. We're getting there. I wish we could do everything. I know. Um, just, um, can I just move me now? I know, I know. Did you ever see the movie Matrix? The Matrix? No. Remember they, they have a, they, they sit in these chairs and they literally load a program. Oh. And so they're instantly like a kung fu master. Oh, so <laughs> yeah, that was so great. So um, that pitch that your voice stops at is a comfortable pitch for your speaking range. It's the higher end of your speaking range. And so now you'll notice I'm talking up there. And because I teach all day long for several days a week, I do this all the time. Mm -hmm. And it saves my voice. So, and you'll also notice that I speak expressively. Mm -hmm. I do that on purpose. I had to cultivate it as a habit because before that I just talked down here. Mm -hmm. I would just, that's my normal, this is where I speak. And when I'm down here, you can hear mm -hmm. that there's graveliness, there's a little bit of what's called vocal fry, that, uh, that, that sound. Um, and what's happening there is your vocal fold edges are, are hitting hard against each other instead of just uh, it's a it's a instead of just beating against each other like they're supposed to because mm -hmm. uh, they do they beat against each other and they vibrate that's part of the production of sound but you work your way up and you begin to practice feeling normal <laughs> talking at a higher pitch than your it's it's a between a third and a fifth higher than you normally would speak. And it is a serious vocal lifesaver. Um, and I don't, are you doing presentations anymore much these days or? We are doing a lot of interaction with business people. So, yes. Now they don't know you. No. I mean, well, they may have talked, spoken to you on the phone and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But um, part of people's hesitation for to doing this is uh, feeling weird. Yeah. Like people are going to think, well, why should you change funny. your voice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's talking funny. But they don't because they really don't know the difference. And the other thing is, you're not just talking up here. You're not, you know, there are people I know that I had a voice student that came to me and she spoke like that. I mean, that's just how she talked. <laughs> <laughs> There's an actress that talks like that for young girls. Um, you're not doing that. You're just, you're inflecting a lot more, and you're kind of camping out in that higher end of, the end of your top range. So, why don't you try it? So I'll say, hey, Deborah. You want me to go, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. So that, uh -huh. um, 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 you want to try to talk up there a little bit today and start, you know, without sounding like you're talking on a roller coaster. Uh -huh. <laughs> Just start inflecting more. Start, uh, using more of your vocal speaking range. It's still all in your chest voice, um, but it gets you out of that place that, that gets gravelly. Um, I think it's a kind of laziness maybe, but you just kind of go there. Yeah, it, well, it's, it's your natural kind of place that your voice goes, and it's, and it's okay. That's normal. Most of us have that. Okay. <laughs> Ugh, so good. Um, so uh, that's something to try. Um, the other thing is a little weird trick that's not attractive. <laughs> now it could be that there is post nasal drip. Yeah, I'm um, feeling that today. Okay. And we're gonna feel it more <laughs> over the next what month and a half, right? Because we've had this strange. Winter. It's only my second winter in 
Chattanooga, but I'm definitely seeing that it's it's way different. It's, it's, different. it's different for me and that girl up, so it's not in Chattanooga, but in the southeast. Yeah, there's there are definitely weather patterns that are that are like there's the the kind of more immediate weather patterns, and there's the mega weather patterns that are like the every thousand years that weather, you know that you don't like if you're not a weather nerd. <laughs> where we just live oblivious to them. Show them. So, and um, so okay. So this is uh, there's there's a couple of things. Did I talk with you about the saline nasal mess? You did, okay. and, and I probably need to get some. Okay. And did I tell you my technique for using that? Okay. So I can do that because that's going to be really helpful for you throughout the next season. Okay. Um, Okay, and a quick and dirty thing, if you have a private place you're in your car, you're going to do a gargle, okay, but without, without using water. Um, so you're going to actually generate, uh, you're going to imitate the gargle until it generates its enough saliva. Um, the reason is because when you gargle deeply and in a relaxed way, um, you are... Uh, stirring up any gunk that's falling back there on your vocal cords. I learned this from an opera singer, and then I started applying it, and I started realizing because she just did it all the time. That that, that was one of her warm up mm -hmm. processes, and then I discovered, oh, this really helps with all the allergy stuff that we don't even. The ones that are the most insidious, you don't realize that mm -hmm. they're doing what they're doing, and you uh, kind of go through your day and you just notice an increasing sense of gunk. All right, so um, you're literally going to put a gargle action in the back like this. That's oh, not attractive. <laughs> yeah. oh. And you're just you're just doing that. If you don't have any saliva that's back there for you, it's okay. You can still do the same with swallow. Oh, do you hear? I'm still doing the same action, mm -hmm. but there's not saliva in there that's like gargling around. Do that for one or two minutes at the most, and you will feel immediately. You might even have to swallow down gunk that is getting loosened up. Mm -hmm. Do you want to try it? <laughs> now, and the trick is, don't have it be forward in your mouth, but way back there. <laughs> so, and that's okay. You don't have I know how to gargle because I do it. And minimal air, you'll find over time, play with that this week, you don't need a lot of air. So sending a bunch of air through there <sighs> is actually kind of counterproductive. So it's not letting the muscles in there relax. So as you kind of familiarize yourself with the whole like generation of that movement back there um, and of the gargle reflex you, and controlling it as a, as a reflex, um, I mean, reflexes are not controlled, but you know, controlling that activity that as an activity, as you become more comfortable with that, send less and less air and just let it be a muscular activity. Now there is air, there's air that passes through, but just don't make it, less and less make it. So there's a little bit more, There you'll feel a little in here, a little more vocal activity so that you get that ah, but it's way back there. Try it again. Okay. All right. I know it feels weird, doesn't it? Like I can't believe I'm doing this in front of us right now. So, um, and right now you're you've got the right impulse going. You're you're we're hearing that ha 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 like a little bit of a laugh kind of a sound. And that's the same, that's the activity. It's just that you're connecting a whole bunch of those all at once. 
ha 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 because that's exactly ha 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 oh ha 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 uh, but but the real deep kind super deep not ha 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 but ha 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 so and you just want to get that until it's going one right after another okay all right so those are some gunk tricks let me teach you my okay again this is not attractive <laughs> this is not um i actually have made a video for my online community on this but i haven't put it up yet because i'm like that's just a little weird <laughs> but um i have shown several students that particularly have told me repeatedly you know i really struggle with this i'm like okay okay so um there's a couple of principles um that i've kind of learned over time so i used to use a neti pot mm -hmm. you know neti pots okay and then i went to neil med uh, sinus rinse um and actually neil med is my favorite aerosol brand uh but this one works so it's a little bit cheaper than neil meds yeah. Yeah, um, but the neil med has the best tip uh, so whenever you're feeling spendy, go get that one. <laughs> and, uh, but I keep these around. And um, each of my kids has their own with their name on it for when they get sick or to prevent them getting sick, prevent the sinus infection from oh. happening because you prevent the postnasal drip. Okay, so it's all prevention, prevention, prevention. So, um, all right, so here's what I do. So... Oh, it's so it's my idea is and the instructions on here are just about moistening mm -hmm. the nasal membranes. And that's good. It's very good. But that's not what we're going after. And I I moved from the Neil Med sinus rinse, which which was kind of replacing my neti pot. Neti pot, I just I was like, I don't have time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Neil Med was a little faster, but again, I was like. It's still like you have to be really particular about how you wash the bottle and all this kind of junk. You don't want germs building up in there. Um, and and so I did that for several years. And then I was like, I'm just lazy. <laughs> and I'm willing. And now that Costco's selling these, I'm going to go ahead and get these. So here's what I do. The idea is for irrigation, right? And, uh, and then to get it all out after you irrigate, which is part of the irrigation process. Okay. So to irrigate means to move it through, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, we want to move, we want to get this into the sinuses, and we want to get it out of the sinuses. So I've developed this little couple step process. All right. So I take it and I'll just do the whole thing because can't really talk during it. So that, I'm getting toward the end of the bottle. So that was not even as much, not as much was coming out as when you have a full bottle. So now were you breathing in when you were putting that in your nostrils? Yeah, or, or? not like, not mm. like sucking it in. Right, because I couldn't tell if you were or not. So but a, but a, just a normal inhale, right? So I am inhaling so that it will go in. And I, when I had to have sinus surgery, that's when I discovered mm -hmm. power sinuses. I, mean, I had an idea of what is all shape, where the where the sinus spaces are, the cavities, um, but I had no idea that there were all these folds and all these nooks and crannies. Yeah. Yeah. And um, and my problem was I had ninety percent blockage, wow. so it couldn't drain. So I am really militant about mm -hmm. keeping everything open because uh, I don't want to do that again. <laughs> right now, it's not um, so true. So, and also just, I don't, I don't know if, ever, if I told you my story, but I was sick like six to eight months out of the year. It was a buildup effect of, as a young singer, singing professionally, I didn't have time for sinus infections. Mm -hmm. I was tested for allergies 
everything came up negative. But I was like, why do I keep getting colds? And why do I keep my colds would go to sinus infection? Mm -hmm. And um, I don't have a deviated septum, but I just, I, it would go straight to my sinuses or my tonsils. I eventually got my tonsils out and then it just, so then there was no tonsils to infect. So it would just stay up in the head. And um, every time I got a sinus infection, I didn't have six weeks mm -hmm. to wait for it. So I would go get antibiotics. Right. Well, nobody told you back then in the 90s, there were a few, only the weirdos and the tree huggers were talking about probiotics at the time. And most of the probiotics I was aware of was like, Van and yogurt, mm -hmm. you know, which has and hardly yogurt. any probiotic and has a super high sugar content and all, all these other kinds of things that I didn't know. To get the good stuff, you have to take all the bad Take all the bad stuff because I never went to the health food stores because they seemed weird. You know, now it's like they're all like, we've been telling you this all along. You, <laughs> um, you thought we were weird. Like, you were weird. Okay. <laughs> um, so I was on this spiral. Just downward spiral of being sicker and sicker and sicker. And that went on for 25 years. Mm -hmm. And that's how I ended up with 90% blockage because it became impacted. And, uh, and I was, because it couldn't drain, the infection had nowhere to go. So I would wow. be well or appear to be well for a month. And then something else would hit. And because my gut was wrecked by all the, because I was on NLI, yeah, three or four rounds a year mm -hmm. and steroids because there was so much inflammation. Mm -hmm. So it was just like super downward spiral. So, um, I mean, it's just, you know, long, hard battle that I've fought. And now I'm a little evangelistic about all the things. That <laughs> and it's not, you know, no, my story isn't everybody's story. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the solutions that have worked for me aren't yeah, everybody's. So I good. would like to have the information on the doctor that you're talking about. Or Great. I haven't seen him yet, but um, I found him and he's on my list. Mm -hmm. So I will get his name again. I, I've been going to see Dr. Mary McKenzie at CHI Integrative Medicine. I was talking with my hormone specialist tonight. Um, I do like her. She's in between that functional medicine. Mm -hmm. uh, and a, a traditional Western, like it's either drugs or surgery. Yeah. Uh, prevention isn't really talked about too much. She's in between, but she's, yeah, but it's still pretty conservative. Mm -hmm. So uh, I, I want to go check out this other guy. So I'll. I'll I've, I've had an inkling about my thyroid for a while. I, I have them check it every time I go in to make sure. It's yeah, they always tell you it's normal. Yeah. Well, as long as I'm taking that lot of rocks and I'm, we've got my levels equal, equal where they should be, but yeah, I still don't feel comfortable about it. So. Okay. All right. Well, I wrote it down to I'll get it to you in a month or two. No. <laughs> Where are you okay. Going? So now let us uh, let me hear a fire engine, and then before you go, I want to teach you a couple things besides <clears throat> now that hopefully those little tips, those are just hard won tips and tricks. Hopefully they're going to help you through this season. Yeah, I, can, I, I hope so, because I do have that. And I could feel it. I mean, I was trying to do this. And actually, that's where I've done most of my practice is either in the car or been in the shower. <laughs> the <laughs> shower. Really good, good in the shower. That was great. Yeah, because I had that hot steam going, yeah. and it was really, and I thought, whoo, that was good. Yeah. And <laughs> you're standing, which <clears throat> is your pelvic floor is part of your vocal support system mm -hmm. so uh when you are seated it's not a problem but you just have a little bit better awareness and support when you're standing but well i'm just not comfortable doing it where parker can hear me that's my problem it's all good <laughs> it's only so, been a week it's only been a week so i'm like okay when i get a little more com comfortable with what i'm doing and now, he, he does know you're coming yes he okay. does <laughs> Oh, yeah, I know. I let him read everything, and I told him what I was thinking about doing. He has just always been really supportive of me, and he's just about my human. So hope you get to meet him sometime. I'm looking forward to it. So what am I doing now first? Oh, fire engine. Fire engine. <clears throat> okay. I want to see how you've been doing it. Oh. Okay, 
observation. Trying to get over the gravel is what I was hoping for. Still feel like I'm doing more of a step than a rainbow, but <clears throat> I'm getting, I'm trying to get comfortable where that sound came from instead of that lower. Okay, great, super. What now, you here. I mean, now, okay, so good. I heard, I didn't hear stair stepping. Oh, okay. So much smoother rainbow. I did hear at the top. Did you hear where your voice kind of just Crack. skipped out for a second? Mm -hmm. And that means your vocal folds don't meet. And so you just have air blowing through and for like a second. Um, but part of that is your physical response to being up there. I could see, you know, as you get tired, you can watch yourself. If you'll be able to, you know, I'm hopeful that this will be bright enough that you'll be able to see yourself in the video and watch your facial expressions as you um, as you review your video. And you can get an idea of what you were thinking and feeling because your emotions affect your voice. Okay. So if you're being like if you're thinking to yourself, here comes that top, here comes that top, here comes that top, here comes that top. <laughs> so you literally are gonna tense up. Uh, and uh, which is completely counterproductive for a smooth tone. So you want to and breath. Okay, so the tighter everything gets, the less flow you're going to have. So, um, so watch the video and see if you can get any hints about what you're thinking. Give yourself okay. feedback. Actually, okay. when I did this, I felt myself at one time when I was when I did it smooth the few times that I did. I, I felt myself kind of pushing the air in more because I feel like I'm holding my breath at, at certain points instead of letting it be what helps get that sound out. Okay. So I push that over the over the top sometimes. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> um, all right. W today, let's start on the breathing exercises. Okay. okay. And uh, a little bit of teaching. I've been experimenting this spring. With, uh, I used to make my students all go through a whole process of understanding what we were about to do. Mm -hmm. And then I, you know, I thought, you know, I'm going to experiment with, with my adult students. Teaching them the first exercise, then telling them that process, and then having them, you know, do it while they're learning and understanding, and it'll grow on mm -hmm. the understanding and the physical, uh, the physical comprehension mm -hmm. of it. Uh, as well as the mental. So um, I want to start you on that. The um, okay. So the fire engine. Did I tell you to do it on off? No. What? How did I tell you to do it? Do you remember? Okay. So typically it's on hum. It's humming. Oh, it's humming. That's right. I caught myself doing that two or three times and went back to. Okay. Humming. And that's okay. That's okay. Oh. Either either one is great for vocal warm up. Okay. So super. Um, humming is going to get you in different ways. It's going to, they're going to do different things for you. Um, but do one for me that's humming so I can hear that. Okay. Fighting to get out of the gravel. So uh, by getting out of the gravel, I'm not being very consistent. Three mm -hmm. observations. Oh, no. I'm sorry. Say three observations about that one you just did. Uh, it cut out a few times like we were talking. Um, I felt like I didn't use my air appropriately. I probably went out in the first <laughs> second or two I did it and then. Uh, so it's it was more. Um, I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I, it didn't feel good except for a couple of places and I just. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Fine. I just was writing down somebody I want you to go and listen to. I don't endorse all of her songs, but she has a little voice. She's got a great little voice. Um, another person. Uh, come up with her name. All right, because I was just thinking about what the lady said to you in church. Mm -hmm. 
Um, how like, deep my voice is. So? <laughs> um, my response is, thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, you know, so, yeah. Let that be yours. If somebody ever tells you again, you have a low voice, go, thank you. <laughs> I've been really working on my voice. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, my hero is fill in the blank. Uh -huh. <laughs> so, female singer who sings with a low voice. Uh, okay. So, um, that's fine. Now I can hear the tentative breath, right? So breath is, is a, having steady flow of breath mm -hmm. is super important for a steady flow of singing. Mm -hmm. No breath, no singing, okay? Mm -hmm. No breath, no sound. Yeah. So um, let's do um, the first breathing exercise. And um, I'll have you sit here so that I can do the exercise facing the camera and watch me okay. so it's real simple this is just getting the stuff that we're going to talk about in just a minute it's just just to comprehend it to physically begin to feel it mm -hmm. to understand the cause and effect and to uh, to relax in what we are doing so let me just say up front, we are going to manually breathe, right? Okay, our, our breathing process, thank God, is autonomic. Mm -hmm. We don't have to think about it. It, it. The brain controls it. As long as the brain's alive, you know, we're going to breathe. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to just temporarily turn that off, and we're going to control it through a manual process, right? So that's, just keep that in mind. As I do this. Okay, so that's three repetitions of the same. It's all the same thing. Your goal would be to do 30 a day. It takes about five minutes. Okay, so not this. This one is simple and easy. Okay? Now you weren't breathing. You weren't breathing at all. Here. I was breathing, but I was doing it manually. Oh, okay. so here's what's happening. So let's talk about the autonomic respiratory process. Okay, so the brain sends says. Time for the next breath. Mm -hmm. Sends a neurological signal to the diaphragm. The diaphragm muscle, let me show you just a little schematic of it. Because this will take you back to some school days. But uh -huh. all right, so the diaphragm is a, we have several diaphragms in our body. This is the respiratory diaphragm. It sits inside the rib cage like an upside down bowl. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's the shape. Even better thinking about it is toilet plunger. Oh. Okay, because that has the pliability and it does the act, does the exact action that we're going to be talking about. Um, it do to do, do. So when the brain says breathe, uh, the diaphragm contracts. Like all muscles have two states: contracted or relaxed. Mm -hmm. That's why our joint muscles work in pairs, right? So when I want to bend this, the front ones contract, the back one's relaxed when I want to, I either uh, just let it go, or if I want to bring it back this way, mm -hmm. these have to contract, this has to relax. Okay, so the diaphragm, when it, uh, just think of that toilet plunger again, if the toilet plunger was a big muscle, the signal comes, the, the whole thing contracts on itself, and think about cooking, did you used to eat bologna hacks when oh, you were yeah. a kid? Okay. Da, da, da. No, no kids today know about bologna hats. <laughs> no parent in their right mind feeds their kids bologna anymore. That's right. I'm like, I grew up on them, but you're not going to eat them. Yeah. Um, Still so, would love to. Yes, I <laughs> So good. I still will eat bacon though. Yeah. So um, the way they did that, they when the heat was applied, 
it would begin to contract on itself, mm -hmm. right? And create the hat shape. Okay. Right. So now in this case, it would it contracts on itself and flattens as a result because it becomes a smaller surface area. Boop. Okay. So now the first cause is the signal. Okay. Bam. Okay. The effect of that signal is the diaphragm contracts. And as a result of that contraction, it flattens. Okay. When now that flattening becomes the next cause. Okay. When the flattening happens, yeah, she's gonna, she knows she's being bad. She just went through the trash can and got another nasty clean out. Um, so uh, when the diaphragm contracts, that causes there to be more space in this whole cavity right here inside of which are our lungs and our heart, okay? Heart doesn't, the heart rides the storm, but it doesn't, it's not gonna do what we're about to talk about with the lungs. The lungs are not muscle tissue. They're their own kind of tissue. They're, they're lung tissue. When God made them, this is gonna become a lung. Oop, okay, so it doesn't, it doesn't, do anything but be alone. It's yeah, and and it's I think of it as a wet car wash sponge. Okay, oh. that's like a that's just a good way to describe what it does. So whatever space it's given, that's the space it'll take. So if the sorry, no. Sorry, we'll take another 30 seconds before we <laughs> um, So uh, it'll take the space it's given. So when it's given that little extra space, it'll expand. Just like that, think of the car wash sponge. If it was compressed, it gets to expand. That is our next effect, right? So our cause is the lowering of the, of the diaphragm. The effect is the expansion of the lung, okay? That becomes our next cause, okay? The expansion of the lung causes a vacuum to be created inside the lung, okay? That lung, becomes, that, that vacuum, I'm sorry, becomes the next cause, okay? And I'm moving over as I tell the story. Mm -hmm. So that vacuum causes, and the universe hates a vacuum, wants to fill it with something. In this case, our body is designed, a healthy body will always give it air because we have the sinus, uh, and we have the cavities and the airways and stuff. So that, that, that vacuum will pull in air. There's our inhale, okay? So that's the whole process. We got signal, contraction, lowering, expansion, creating vacuum, pulling in air, all right? Inhale, all happening without us thinking about it. Mm -hmm. Then when everything is, like the, the air is all in there, it's all good, um, then the muscle, uh, the diaphragm muscle relaxes, goes back to its resting state, pushes up on the lung, compresses it, forces the air out. That's our exhale, okay? So you can see the little causes and effects that happen just step by step, it's a sequence of events. Never thought. Okay, I know, <laughs> I know, right? It's like I, every little aspect of seems just wait we start talking about the voice. Um, every little aspect, I get very preachy with my students. I mean, I try not to be preachy, but I'm just like, this is so, Screams created order. Screams created order. So it just is very, very cool. All right, so now here we are with this exhale. So here's what we're doing with our exercise. Um, I also have to give a, being a researcher, I always have to get credit where credit is due. So I learned this principle of this breathing technique first in 1991 or two from a bel canto instructor that may not mean anything to you, but um, Margaret Riddleberger, she had six or seven students on Broadway at the time she was an opera singer herself. So um, I learned it from her, but she didn't have a, a name for it and uh, she never published it. Fast forward about 12 years, I started taking contemporary voice lessons from a woman named Jeannie Diva in Boston who had published it. And as I was studying her stuff, I was like, oh, this is the same thing that Margaret Riddleburger was teaching, but she never published it. 
because that was old school. Like that, the old, like the old school way is you came for lessons and you came for years and you, you know, that was just it. Like that's how, if you want to learn anything, that's what you did. Or you went to school. Mm -hmm. uh, but most of our students were professional singers like me. And I wasn't on Broadway. It would have been awesome. But, mm -hmm. but that, you know, that's what you did. So Jeannie published it and had really kind of like uh, made it a little more accessible to a lot more. Um, so uh, what we're doing with this three exercise process is we are going to um, create an expansion so that our diaphragm will lower without actually having to contract, okay? So we're creating uh, the space for the lungs to uh, expand and the inhale to happen uh, by using other muscles besides the diaphragm, okay? Then the diaphragm and the larynx will be in perfect harmony. Like they will, the di if we leave them alone, like we did when we were babies and we could scream our heads off for hours. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> um, we would not have to do stuff. Okay. Um, we unlearn that whole process. So this, um, we, we unlearn the relaxed version of this over the course of time. We are not going back to the three month old version mm -hmm. of of the, the diaphragmatic laryngeal coordination, but we are creating a different kind of coordination, all right? So it's manual. And, uh, and this series of exercises and the, and the technique I'm going to teach you, it has saved me on dozens and dozens and dozens of occasions because uh, it provides an excellent support system for the diaphragm and the larynx to be completely relaxed and coordinated. Mm -hmm. okay? So you can choose over time to like practice it for a while once you learn it and then go, I don't like this. Okay, I'd rather go back to the three month thing. Oh, it's fine. But you won't know until you try it, right? So, and learn it and really train your muscles. So, um, but I'm giving you tools and that's all any teacher can do is give you tools and you try them on, you put them on when you're singing and you use them and then you decide long-term whether to keep them or not. Um, I've been practicing this, using this technique since, well, I met Jeannie, uh, oh, I met Margaret Riddleberger, early 90s, Jeannie, mid to late 90s. So uh, I've been doing it for a while. So um, what I'm doing is this, okay? Standing without my feet. My knees locked, so knees a little bit, just not locked. Okay? Um, palms facing slightly outward, chest is up, just not. Mm -hmm. um, uh, mouth is open, that's the key. Okay, so mouth is open. Raise arms to about shoulder height, and then bring them around the front like you're about to dive into a pool. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again, the whole time, your mouth is just open. Now, you don't suck in any air. You don't blow out in the air at the end. In the air at the end, you just let the air come in. So what's happening here is when I raise my arms, the lats that are attached to my shoulders are going to be pulled up, and they're going to gently pull up on the rib cage. The rib cage. So let's say this is my pretend rib cage. Uh, my rib cage gets lifted, and because my diaphragm muscle is attached to the bottom of the rib cage all the way around, it just goes down. Okay, it's not like, it's not doing that. It's just going down a little bit. And we know now the lungs get to expand, creates the vacuum, air flows in. So there's no sucking in. I mean, unless you, I mean, yeah, vacuum sucks air technically, yeah. but the air flows in. It's gentle. You didn't hear anything while I was doing it. I wasn't, there's none of that. It just flows in. I inhaled that way. Then I let everything go back. The diaphragm goes back to its resting state, presses up on the lungs, compresses and pushes the air out. And that's my exhale. Mm -hmm. So see how we're manually inhaling, manually exhaling, it's very gentle. 
Now the thing is, we hold our hands there for about six seconds. I just listen to the clock tick, and then I let them go. The air come out. Slowly or no? No, I just I you saw what I did, just and you'll have it on there. Mm -hmm. And I just let them go down, and the air kind of the the inhale starts like a second or so after you start this motion mm -hmm. and you feel the rib cage begin to lift and then you start to feel the inhale and you'll feel it come in gently over your lips and then once you let that go it's really kind of once your rib cage is dropping again you'll feel that air come out you're not sucking not blowing Wow. So why don't you give it a shot, and I'm going to text my next student just five minutes late. Okay. 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 I'll be with you in five minutes. Go ahead and do two more. Don't let your head dip down too much. Just keep your head relaxed enough. Jack, you're so weird. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. It's all right. So you're gonna do maybe like 10 and rest a minute, 10, rest a minute, 10. If you can, if you have five minutes all in a row. Uh, otherwise do 10 in the morning, 10 in the day, 10 at night, whatever. You'll find this one is very relaxing, almost meditative. The next two, no. no not, not so much. <laughs> and then we start to build muscle to kind of accomplish the same thing. So it's uh, it's simple, but not easy. The and the Number three, and they're sequential. Number three, by the time we get to number three, you're applying the voice to it and you are working hard with these muscles to lift your cage. So, but one thing at a time. Okay. So, this week is just focusing on letting that happen. Um, okay, so also this week, um, keep up your fire engine. You can keep alternating between. Um, uh, the hum and ah. You could also add buzzing. Um, you can add a lip trill. If you can do that, if not, we'll work on it. Or a tongue trill. All those are excellent for relaxing your tongue, jaw, everything. You, there's, there is no professional singer that doesn't do lip trills and tongue trills. Mom and I just, I would stare at them and lie and wonder, like, uh, uh, it's it's one of the singer's best friends. Humming, lip trills, and tongue trills. Um, now, I want to encourage one thing this week as you do your, uh, let me go, let me uh, start my program to get my, uh, Next voice student. I'm going to show you one little thing to do just so he knows I'm here. Um, okay, so yeah, he's an online student. So um, when you do your fire engine, experiment with this. Okay? So the, um, the what I'm demonstrating is not so much how high I went or how uh, long I went or anything like that. It is um, letting your apparatus, your vocal apparatus, relax enough um, to kind of see if it will go further up top. Because you're, you know, you're maxing out at 
what I think is probably not where your maximum is. I think you have a whole head voice that you can't access very well yet. And so we're just going to see if we can get you to relax and literally almost let the sound fall out. Part of the reason we struggle to get our higher notes is that we um, think of high as being high. Okay? Yes. But where is all vocal sound created? Think about that for a second. Where is it all created? Air. Well, air, but where does the air go to create the sound? I just want you to think about this, isn't it? Oh. Through your vocal um, cords? Yes. It's all here. There's no high and no low. It's all here. It's a matter of frequency, and it's a matter of the position of the larynx and how thin or thick the vocal cords are at the moment, or the millisecond. And, uh, and how long the passage, the air passageway it's lit. And the whole thing is about the size of a dime. Uh, so all this is happening. So the voice is created here, but the resonation happens. That's what gives us our voice. This is plucking a gu guitar string in midair. You know, like it's nothing, you know. When you put the guitar string over the body of the guitar and you pluck it, then those sound waves have somewhere to go. That's why standing in a rotunda is so awesome to sing. That's why standing in the shower, it's so awesome to sing in it. Not only are your membranes nice and moist, but you're closed in by tidal usually. So right. you've got all that great feedback going on and the sound waves are just resonating all over the place and you're just like, do that the best place in my life. Ah, look how much I carry. <laughs> so, um, so, uh, all right. So, and that was quick and dirty. I'm sorry. You'll watch the video for when I go. Cause I didn't start at the beginning. I waited until I was just about to turn around to come back down. I actually did a little, I was trying to cut it short. So normally I would wait even a little higher. So literally I was like, I would be like, okay, that's my top. I'm gonna turn around. And at that point, I would bend over, leading with the chest so that you don't cave, but leading with the chest, keeping your knees a little bit bent, kind of like yoga forward fold if you do yoga at all. And then letting everything just relax. You have a flow of blood and fluids through your neck area and into your head, you'll definitely feel it in your head. Mm -hmm. But it's only for a second, a few seconds. And because of that, you have like instant warmth and relaxation in your larynx. You're, tell you're telling your brain kind of in a backwards kind of way, hey, remember, I'm not reaching for this. There's no up. Mm -hmm. It's all here. And you're warming up the here and lubricating it and relaxing it. And you just see, will your voice kind of fall out and go a little bit higher? Sometimes it's remarkable. It just like the whole second half of a person's voice has come out with them. So you play with that. All right. Gotta go. <laughs> wow, it goes so quick. I 